Want to win more games in Madden 24? Help me! Help me! In this video, I will show you four things that determine the outcome of most games on offense and defense. Got it! And then I will tell you how to get better at them. So if you want to see the four steps winning more games in Madden, stick around after the intro. For the fastest, cheapest, most reliable coins on the market, check out my coin sponsor, MMOXP.com, and use discount code MONEYSHOT to get 5% off your order. Link in the description below. The plays from today's video can once again be found in my Denver Broncos Offensive and Las Vegas Raiders Defensive eBooks. If you guys want more help, you can download these or any of my eBooks simply by clicking the links in the description or the top pinned comment. My team for today's gameplay will once again be my Philadelphia Eagles who are looking for revenge against a team that just knocked them off in real life in the New York Jets. Now that the Eagles lost, however, I do plan on using some new teams in future gameplays, so let me know in the comments section what teams you guys would like to see me use next. The top two teams that I want to use are the New York Giants and the Atlanta Falcons, but give me some suggestions in the comments section and if you're enjoying the content please make sure to be a subscriber and hit the like button as it really helps out the channel and i appreciate all the support my first tip is to have a philosophy in the nfl every team has a philosophy on both offense and defense before they build a team around that philosophy so ask yourself what is your philosophy my defensive philosophy is a mix of attacking with speed and blitzes while also mixing in zone coverages to play bend but don't break defense the defense that i'm currently using to do this is the big nickel over g and that's because it's flexible which is my next tip. Flexibility lasts and football is a war of attrition. So the more flexible player will usually outlast the stiff and rigid player that can't do the one thing that they want to do. With this scheme, if my opponent is a runner, I can go with two linebackers, four defensive linemen, and three safeties for better run defense. But if they're more of a passer, I could swap out these linebackers for safeties, these safeties and coverage for cornerbacks, which is how I like to start the game as I assume everyone using Aaron Rodgers is going to pass. On the first play, I usually like to give my opponent what I like to call a bum check, which is where I man zero blitz them to see if they can handle it, as a lot of players can't. But my opponent was ready for that as he hits Garrett Wilson on the first play of the game and my CPU Darius Slay blows the coverage, giving up a one play touchdown on what looks like a simple switch concept. If you're relying on CPU defenders, stuff like this is going to happen. You can't be everywhere at once, but you need to at least be in coverage. So if you're playing on the defensive line or rushing the passer, you won't ever be an elite defender until you stand up and get into coverage yourself. So even though I'm down, that first play felt like a fluke, so I'm going to act like it never happened and play the game like the score is 0-0. Zero, zero. My current offensive philosophy is my new iForm Close scheme, which I just put out a video about yesterday. And this is because the October patch just changed the requirements for run defense, which I went over more in that video. But this is a tips video, so I'm going to be focusing more on that. So if you guys want to see more about the offense and defense I'm using in this video, I will have links in the description as well as on screen at the end of the video. So stick around for that. On offense, I'll be flexible as well, as I always want to take what the defense gives me. As every defense has a weakness, you just have to be able to find it. On this first series, my opponent is using the Dime Normal DB Blitz Zero, which only has four down linemen, so I should have no problem running the ball. Except this blitzing cornerback on the weak side makes it so that I have to get up the field fast, or he'll catch me from behind as he forces me into an early tackle. I could be stubborn and just try to ignore that and just try to do what I want to do, but it won't yield nearly as positive results. I choose an inside run on the next play so I can get up the field faster and avoid these blitzing cornerbacks. I still get to do what I want, which is running the ball, but since I'm more flexible, it's going to be more successful. On third and three, my next tip is to play situational football. The most important thing to do at this point is stay ahead of the sticks and keep refreshing the downs. So all I care about is getting over that marker. On the next play, I get stuffed to get the second and long, so I decide to try and take a shot on second down, but the blitz is too fast, forcing me to get into a third and long situation. I try to pass again, loser, and now it looks like I'm failing the bum test, but it's too early and I'm going to remain flexible and punt the ball away. Too many man players want to do what they want to do and go for it from here before getting down a quick two scores and rage quitting because they aren't playing smart. My next tip is all about predictability. If you can make your opponent predictable while staying unpredictable, you will have much more success. And there are several ways to do this. Number one, you always want to stop the run first. <laughs> Your ass down. As this will at least make your opponent one dimensional and that they will usually abandon the run and become a passer if they don't have success early on. He gets the first down on a drag a few plays later but once again this is a bend but don't break philosophy. We shut the run down once again on the next play and all this will pay dividends down the line as he passes again on the very next play. People will always repeat success and try to avoid repeating failure. So if I keep stopping the run like this, he will eventually stop doing it. But he is having success with the pass as he gets inside the red zone. The red zone though is another form of predictability as now I know what area of the field he has to attack since there's no longer deep field to cover, which usually makes playing defense much easier for me. But at the moment he is still getting the best of me as he takes a 14-0 lead. 
Brown. My next tip is to keep your composure, which is an extension of situational football. Things don't always go your way in Madden, but just like football, this is an emotional game. And if you can't control your thoughts and emotions, they will force you to do dumb things and make mistakes, which can only make things worse. So I have to keep my composure and play the situation, as I have to score before this game gets out of hand. So I'm going to stay flexible as well and switch to a more pass-heavy offense since I need to score quickly. So I switch to my gun-wing flex offset scheme, which will benefit me against this defense in multiple ways. Number one, I am no longer under center, which will buy me much more time to pass. Number two, this is a more spread formation than the eye form close. So now these blitzing cornerbacks are starting to play much further away or have to go around tight ends. And number three, I have more man zero blitz concepts in this offense. So I decided to use my stick nod vertical play as this corner route roasts safeties and coverage, which is why I switched them out for cornerbacks in my defense with higher man coverage ability. Break yourself, fool! And even though I'm still losing, I'm celebrating like I'm winning because I want to affect his composure on the other side. It's all about mental warfare. If I can make him try harder to shut me up or make a statement, it might open him up to make a mistake. Once again, I'm trying to keep my composure while messing with his. On the last drive, I wasn't getting much with my max coverage, so I decided to be flexible and pivot to my cover 3 blitz, which gives me pressure but also gives me a lot of deep coverage so that nothing can get behind it. It's not that great against the run though, as he gets his best carry of the game to get inside the red zone once again. So from here, I can send more blitzes and play more underneath coverage as we get him into a third and long from here. Another way to make your opponent predictable other than the red zone is down in distance. Now that we know that he has to get 12 yards, we can play it that way. And one of the best ways to play situational football, in my opinion, in this situation, is to get to the quarterback before the receivers can run those 12 yards. So I send the house to the next play and we get off the field. With only 1 minute and 39 seconds left before the half though, the clock is another indicator that makes someone predictable, as my opponent knows that I will most likely have to pass to get points with only one timeout left. So I decide to go back under center in the hopes that he will think that I am running, and it works out well enough as we complete a big pass to get down the field in a hurry. You got most from here now I have plenty of time, so I try to work the speed out route before running for the first down. And he's not running that blitz anymore, so now I'm happy to keep him in this as I hit another big play to the cross and receiver. But I don't want to score too fast and give him the ball back with too much time for his offense. As the clock is always an important factor. So I wait a little bit before I hit the speed out route once again. And he was all over it, but not fast enough. But now I know that he is watching that play, so I'll have to be more careful in the future and pick my shots so that I don't get predictable with that route. From here, I have to play the situation and play a little bit of prevent to try to keep him from getting points before half. And since I came back down 14 nothing, he has to feel a sense of urgency to get his lead back to what it was. Gotcha, bitch! And he is a little late on the first throw, as his lack of composure just cost him a pick six and the lead. Now with 27 seconds left, we're still in the same situation, only now he has nothing to lose. He starts the drive by hitting another deep crossing route, so I'm going to have to get a little bit more aggressive before he almost scores on the very next play. And now it's looking like he won't even need those timeouts as he scores on a zig adjustment to take the lead back before half. And fuck this guy! I start with the ball in the second half, and since the game is close, I can go back to my game plan, as the situation is really a problem if I score at the end of this drive. And since he is still in that dime normal, he doesn't have enough size on the field to stop me. So I keep calling hurry up to keep him in it, and I go right down the field, one big run after another. One of the best ways to stay unpredictable is to get to and short situations, as I can call anything for two yards, making it very hard to defend. And since I've been hurrying him up and pounding the rock this entire drive, I decided to throw him a curveball and go back to the speed out route. And you can see he wasn't expecting that since he was pinching his entire defense to try to stop this run. Psych now I just have to figure out something on defense. Given the pace of the game and his lack of success running the ball, he is now turning into a pure passer. For you. Which is always the goal, as I can now make all my calls towards stopping the pass. And now that he's become so predictable, he can't complete one pass on the way to a 4th and 10 that he has to go for, and he barely gets. But at least we're having more success. He tries to run the ball in the next play, so I have to remind him that that's a bad idea. And on the next play, he goes right back to passing again, as we shut him down on the next two plays to get him back to another 4th down situation that he just continues to convert. I continue to mix up my coverages to try and stay unpredictable by hitting him with another man zero blitz before I drop everyone back into coverage on the very next play. Nope. And on the next play, I think my CPU is in position to make the play, <laughs> so I don't click on. And that was a huge mistake, because remember, the CPU sucks. So you always have to do it yourself, and if I would have clicked on, I probably would have had a pick. Now down three, I have plenty of time, but time is the biggest 
key, as the best scenario is scoring a touchdown with no time left on the clock. So I run the ball and the clock before he stuffs my run one more time, and I lose a little bit of composure and decide to take a shot. But since he's in cover zero, I switch to my cover zero play in the PA tight end leak, and I score a touchdown too early. I took what the defense gave me, but I lost control of the ball with three minutes left in a game where I couldn't stop this guy at all. And now it all comes down to my defense, as my opponent has to score a touchdown. If I was playing in this situation like I just was, I know he will want to run the ball, as his plan now will be the same as mine was, kill clock and score. But I'm not going to let him get there on the ground. Fuck you! So he decides to supplement his ground game with short passes, as he is getting dangerously close before almost scoring in an inside zone. But he only has one timeout left, so I doubt that he's going to run it again. And since he has been short passing me to death, I'm all over on the next play, as he decides to let the clock run down to the last five seconds before calling his last timeout and putting the entire game on the line on the very next play. You guys know I don't mind posting a loss, so will the Jets pull off the upset again? Hell no, as this game ends on the one yard line, and this guy was another good player, but we still got a difficult win. So that's that's the video. If you guys enjoyed the content, please make sure to be a subscriber, hit the like button. And if you guys want to see more about the offenses and defense I was using in today's video to get the win, just click the links on the screen as I'm sure to help with the game. And that's it. Thanks for watching, man. Wish it out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below.